Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the Johnson edition, the collected poems of Emily Dickinson. We turn out a poem 203, He Forgot and I Remembered. Uh, now, this is an, another uh, maybe Sam Boyle's poem. There's some debate about who specifically is being addressed in the poem. You know, guys, it's interesting to point out the way in which artists sometimes can feel strongly. They're very sensitive, often in nature, and clearly Emily has that really high level of strong feelings. I'm trying to deal with the emotions that I'm now suffering with or under. And in some ways, this is one more poem about betrayal, a poem about maybe loss, and for sure, distrust. Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net down that left hand side, Chats with Emily is our playlist. I'm hopeful that you've already worked with our set of introductory comments. I'm hopeful that you have as well already read the preceding uh, 202 poems. We just finished with poem 202, My Eye is Fuller. Now, we've already commented on the ways in which Emily loves biblical stories. And the poem here cannot be read without some background information. So uh, it's interesting it, when you study the gospel accounts in the New Testament of the life of Christ, the stories that are told in all four gospels, and one of those just happens to be the story that we'll be referencing here, where at the end of his life, Jesus Christ is going to be captured and is going to be put on trial. And there is a famous moment when his uh, apostles, his followers, are going to be challenged to own up to the fact that they in fact were in league with him. I'm in Luke 22, 54 to 62 because this passage is a requirement to read the poem we're about to study. Then took they him, Christ, and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. This is the KJV, King James Version of the Bible, the one that Emily would have read. But a certain maid, now interestingly in Matthew 26, 69, that word is damsel, which is the word we'll find in our poem. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him, this obviously being Peter, and said, this man was also with him, that is to say with Jesus. And Peter, he denied it, saying, woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of, him, of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew, the, the, uh, the rooster. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now, it is interesting to think about the biblical stories as often kind of playing the game of betrayal. I mean, go back, for example, to Milton's Eden and Paradise Lost, and the fact that, of course, Adam and Eve in some ways are betraying, right, uh, God in their, uh, in their eating of the forbidden fruit. Think about the Cain-Abel story and the act of betrayal as Cain will take his uh, brother's life. It is interesting, I think, the way that Emily reads biblical text and will come away from that identifying in some way with certain stories more than other stories, and she very much will identify here with this story we just read. In some ways, the quest is to understand the act of betrayal. The poem reads as follows. He forgot that I remember. T'was an everyday affair. Long ago, as Christ and Peter warmed them at the temple fire, thou wert with him, quoth the damsel. No, said Peter, t'wasn't me. Jesus merely looked at Peter. Could I do aught else to thee? Now it is interesting, the syntax, the grammar here. Notice we'll begin with he and end with thee. We begin with this kind of third, uh, this, di this distanced kind of reference, and then ultimately ending up directly at whoever the thee is. It is A, not clear who the thee is. Many have speculated it is Sam Boyles. And it is clear that whatever was 
forgotten by him but remembered by Emily is now today an enigma and a mystery. Obviously, we would love to ask Emily if we could actually chat with her. Uh, hey, what was behind this poem? But notice, whatever it is, and you notice the use of the dashes. He forgot and I remembered. Notice that balance of the three there, right? Twas an everyday affair. Now, we're going to go from affair to fire with that slant rhyme intentionally. But notice, for him, she seems to think, he thought it as no big deal. But clearly, for her, there is some slight that's going on. Then we go to history, to biblical history, with long ago. A formulation she'll play with a few times. As Christ and Peter, and of course here we are at the Luke 22 passage, quote, warmed them, end quote, at the, quote, temple fire, end quote. And uh, obviously, we're back to this, to this, uh, you know, to this passage. Now, of course, this passage that we read in uh, Luke 22 is rooted in a larger context. Uh, you, you, if, if you haven't read it, go back and take a look at it. Um, we're, of course, with Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane, and that evening he will pray, and his disciples will all go to sleep. And he will see this as a kind of act of betrayal himself. And then, of course, you're going to have the famous kiss that will land Christ as arrested by Judas, and then, of course, ultimately you'll have this betrayal. In other words, there's a lot of betrayals in this passage already. She can qualify all of that with just simply warn them at the temple fire. And then the stanza break, thou wert with him, quote the damsel. Now, this again, this passage from Matthew 26, 69, where the, the, the word damsel is, is identified. And then notice the no. So notice the, um, the, the way in which there, the, the, it's very punctuated. No, said Peter. Um, Twasn't me. In other words, the denial of Christ. Again, the three-time denial. I love the use of her word merely here. It, it is a compelling word. Now, there has always been debate about what this look of Jesus, and it's only mentioned in the Luke 22 passage, this look that Jesus gave to Peter was. Was it a look of indictment? Was it a look of forgiveness? And many have argued that, of course, Peter goes on to be considered the most important of those close followers of Christ and therefore must have felt forgiven. But clearly in the moment, as we read, he, he went out to weep. Uh, obviously, he was distraught. Jesus merely, and then notice this, this word looked is in, is in quotation marks, and again, is it the question of forgiveness or indictment? Jesus merely looked at Peter, could I do aught else to thee? So notice, the, we start with he forgot and I remembered, and then whoever the he is, we come back to now, her, she is indicting, and she asks, could I do aught else to thee? Now, what do we mean by do to thee? In other words, give you the look, and if so, what kind of look? Notice, it isn't totally clear. Whoever would have received a poem like this to have read it um, would have maybe begun to ask, wait a minute, am I being forgiven for forgetting? Or am I being told I shouldn't have forgotten and therefore uh, there's something seriously indictive about the lines? It's not altogether clear. At 2A, though, it is clear that what she's arguing is that it is hard to handle betrayal. And, of course, especially a close, a dear friend, right? That is to say, when that happens, the trust that you kind of took for granted is, is in fact, gone. Of course, made even more palpable in the, in the Luke 22 passage because Christ predicts that, in fact, in a moment of crisis, Peter is going to stand down and will not admit that he is, in fact, in league with Christ. For obvious reasons, survival being one of them, right? At 2B, again, I, know, I, I love this how she moves from the he to the the, and obviously it's not clear. We've seen this so regularly in so many of these poems, right? At 3A, well, think about Elizabeth Bishop's roosters, and you'll remember that, that Latin phrase that's translated, uh, the cock crows, Peter weeps. Um, it's, it's a brilliant poem, and, and I'll, and I'll uh, suggest that you run that one to ground. Of course, all the biblical stories that have to do with betrayal, which immediately takes us to Milton's Paradise Lost, it is an interesting read of Paradise Lost, and we've given full lectures uh, uh, at learnstrong.net if you're interested to roll, run that to ground. It is an interesting way to read Paradise Lost, to ask, how does Paradise Lost specifically speak to the issues and challenges of betrayal? It's a fascinating way to read it. We have already several times mentioned a poem that we will soon see, poem 446. 
We saw this when we studied uh, poem um, 92. We saw it when we studied poem 156. I showed her heights she never saw. Would climb, I said? She said, not so. With me, I said, with me? I showed her secrets, morning's nest, the rope, the nights were put across. And now, wouldst have me for a guest? She could not find her yes. And then I break my life, and lo, a light for her did solemn glow, the larger as her face withdrew. And could she further? No. The brilliance of this poem, I'll wait. Um, to get to it. Obviously, there's two spellings of the word no, K-N-O-W and N-O. This here is, of course, the last word, N-O. Finally, in 3B, to identify with a poem like this, I, I have a lot of students that will say, I understand what she's dealing with. It seems like an everyday affair, no big deal. Some word got said, some idea, some text got sent, and to the sender, it was no big deal. But to me, oh, baby, I remember that. Um, a time in your life when you felt betrayed and all you could do to deal with it was maybe give the look, whatever that look might be. I hope these poems are challenging you. Thank you.